Greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Today I would like to talk to you about discouragement. But discouragement many times never come in the form of discouragement. It could come in the form of a pleasant advice. An advice that will look like to bless you, support you, love you, to stand by your side, to protect you. But many times that kind of advice is a discouragement and it a it's a distraction taking you away from the destination where you are going. In the book of Matthew, chapter 16, verse 21, 22, and 23, it says, From that time forth began Jesus to show unto his disciples how he must go unto Jerusalem and suffer many things of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and be raised again on the third day. Now, now this is the words of Jesus. Jesus began to talk about himself, what he is going, what's going to happen to him, what is the plan of God in his life. Now, this is verse 22. Then Peter, a disciple who is ready to do anything, an excite, a disciple of excitement, a disciple who jump out to do anything, he comes to Jesus and says, Jesus, Peter took Jesus and to a side and began to rebuke him, saying, But it far from thee, Lord, this shall not be unto thee. Now, if you look at Peter here, Peter is telling Jesus something very good. When, when we say that we are going to, just imagine you are saying that you are traveling as a missionary to one of the far corners of the world. Your friends may come and tell you, how can you leave your family and go? How can you leave your business and go? How can you leave everything? You can't do that. You don't have to do it. You can do a missionary work here. You don't have to travel far. People could, could come and say that. Now, if you're trying to leave a business and get into something else, they might say, come on, you don't have to do it. I don't want that to happen to you. But listen, when God asks you to do something, when God asks you to go somewhere, when God asks you to get something done, many times the discouragement and distraction comes to you not in the form of discouragement. It comes to you in the form of encouragement. It comes to you in the form of protection. It comes to you in the form of love and caring. It comes to you in the form of security. Something people care for you. But let me tell you, you don't have to worry about how people care about you. Who protects you? You have to you have to be concerned about are you doing what God is asking you to do? If you are not doing it, let me tell you, protection of the people will go away. Financial security will run away from you. Health will fly away from you. But the word of God stands forever. So what you need to do, instead of listening to those encouraging, caring, protecting words, you have to give your ear to the call of God and what God asks you to do. Now, when we go somewhere, people can say, don't go. It's not right. It's not safe. This is Corona. This is that financial crisis. But did God ask you to do something? You must do it. You must not deviate from the plan that God has for you. Many times the discouragement comes through the closest people, but discouragement comes in a way that will never look like discouragement. That's the trick of the devil. Devil uses the people who is very close to us, so, so close to us, even people who sleep on our chest, people hold hands and walk with us, people eat from the same plate with us. They will discourage you, not through discouragement, but through encouragement. They might say, oh, no, 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 no. You don't have to do that. This is not the right time to do it. Wait for six months. Wait for two years. Everything will be ready. Then we will do it together. By two years time, your time is over. What God has planned for you, it's over. Do not wait. Get it done. Do not listen to the encouragement messages that is deviating you from your destination. Any encouragement messages, anything that is deviating you from your destination is not from God. It is from the devil. That is not an encouragement. That is a distraction. That is a discouragement. And that's the reason Jesus said to Peter, but he turned, Jesus turned and said unto Peter, get thee behind me, Satan. Thou art an offense unto me. For thou servest not the things that be of God, but those that of be of man.
But here, God said that Jesus said that words, get behind me. It says, you are an offense to me. What do you mean by offense? You are causing an offense. You are offense to me. That means you are offending. You are not allowing. You are not allowing what I'm trying to do. See, Jesus did not get angry with Peter. Jesus did not shout at Peter. Jesus said what he needed to say. When people come and give words to you in such a way, seems like encouraging or discouraging, but taking you away from the destination. You have to be standing bold and strong. You have to say, no, I am doing because I know what God spoke to me to do and I'm going to do it. So let me tell you, when you do it, there will be a resurrection in your life. If you don't do it, you will never see a resurrection. If Jesus listened to Peter and well, don't go for it, Jesus will never complete his mission. And there will be no resurrection for him. But he is God. Let me tell you that God has called you. If you listen to him, avoid all what you hear from people and listen to what God says. Let me tell you, even though you think that you are going to die, God will give you a resurrection and he will come up in life victorious, glorious, powerful. And then people will say, wow, fantastic. That's for you. Don't give up. Stand firm. The Lord bless you. Thank you for tuning in.